Hi, and welcome to the celebrated nightly news of Calaveras County. My name is John, and we thank you for stopping by tonight. Kim is feeling a little bit under the weather tonight, so you will get me for the next 20 some minutes, and in some ways, my apologies already. Hey, I want to say thank you for stopping by, and today was kind of county government night. Uh, County Government Day. Uh, we started off the day with a uh, Board of Supervisors meeting that ran long. There was lots of retirement, um, retirements, legal access issues, um, <coughs> other issues as well, and finished off tonight with a um, <coughs> finished off tonight with the Angels Camp City Councils meeting. Um, first off, let's see. Let me pull up a little bit of things from this morning and. Oh, let's see, I guess to start off while we're pulling this up, we'll talk a little about the Angels Camp City Council meeting. Now, one of the big items on the agenda tonight for the City Council's meeting was the Lode Hotel. Now, as you know, this has made the news the last few weeks. We've talked about it here. Uh, most of the other media outlets have talked about it as well. Um, the decision tonight, now what was back before the, uh, on December 8th, the city officials and the city uh, Angels Camp building department and stuff, um, toured the hotel and they recommended that it be condemned. Um, so what the the owner of the building was there, the um, owners of the adjacent buildings were there tonight. Um, so one of the things that they they decided to do was to give it a basically 30 days. Um, <coughs> And what that means is they are going to give the owner 30 days to shore up the front or the facade of the uh, front of the building. And we're going to type a little tiny bit here while we're talking about this. Um, <coughs> shore up the front of the facade, and I apologize, we just ran in from the Angels Camp City Council meeting literally probably three minutes ago. So. So what they're going to give them to do is 30 minutes to shore up the front part of the building where this is on the sidewalk where people can actually walk under it. And this has been deemed as a potential, um, <coughs> this has been deemed as a potential, um, as a potential safety hazard, potential safety hazard for, um, for the public. And now that the the city has actually stated it's a safety hazard, then now the city actually has liability for getting something uh, getting something done. So that's one of the things that the the council members were were working on today, and they also want to make sure that they <coughs> do not want to do anything to take unilateral action against a person's property, the owner of the buildings, the loads hotel's property, unless absolutely necessary, but they also want to make sure that it's on a short enough leash so that something actually gets done. Um, <coughs> all right, and hit save here on this one. Okay, and there we go. Um, <coughs> so. That was it in a nutshell. There was other issues on talking about funding issues. When we left there a few minutes ago, they were still working on um, on how they're going the the repayment structure of the um, of the new USDA loan. They're going to work on for sewer issues. They're going to work on that. And the other one was, um, and, but I guess the big the big issue was on the Load Hotel. So on the Load Hotel in downtown Angels Camp. They are going to <clears throat> give the owner 30 days to shore up the front of the building where they are unsafe portions underneath the walkway right on Main Street and Highway 49. Then if he does that, then that will kick in to another 90 days or so to actually come up with a plan to shore up the rest of the building. Um, lots of back and forth comments. Some of the building officials believe that it can be saved, but at what price? So, um, and other members from the community had said that the building's been falling down, in essence, for the last 40 years or so anyway. But then the owners of the adjacent building, uh, Mr. Wilmshurst, spoke. And one of the things is he did not want to see 
is the building gone because then it would be a hole in downtown Angels Camp and his in his opinion they want to see that the building itself saved at all costs whether the current owner does it or whether the city um, had to do it for through some other means but so even though his building is being affected currently by it as the load hotel doing some leaning on his particular building they wanted to make he wanted to make sure that the building does not get demolished because it is it was built in the 1800s 1880s I guess and they want to make sure that there's not a hole there or if there was something that had to be replaced it would be with a historic facade that um, that matched it um, <coughs> All right, and now let's go back to, and it also was a very, very busy traffic day. Um, the biggest mess today was over in, um, in, in, over in Columbia. In, there was a lot of hail put down last evening that some of it melted. So the, they had an ice problem in Columbia that was really really bad at one point they had seven to eight big rigs jackknifed all over the road over there they had to close uh, Parrots Ferry Road they closed the Columbia Elementary School for today so they really had a mess over in Tuolumne County in that section of Columbia um, it was Oh, it was down for several hours in fact one of the tow trucks that was on its way to remove some of the equipment was actually stuck in and could not access it so it was one of those oh it was it was just long and ugly and it was a very very ugly mess now on to the um, Board of Supervisors meeting this morning. Now this morning we're starting off on public comment and we'll start off on public comment and then we'll go back to some of the retirements. On public comments, a comment today it was almost like a Trinitas filibuster. They had um, the head, the um, superintendent of Calaveras Unified School District came and backed the project as did uh, representatives from the Jenny Lind Fire Department on a press release we put up earlier this morning. Also um, showing up there was um, the from CCWD, David Andrus from CCWD was talking about how they are in back of the project and how Trinitas will um, help them fund bringing some of the pipeline issues in for the that portion of the county um, so it was on and on and on there was adjacent neighbors landowners uh, various other issues and interestingly was absent today or at least absent vocally was any opposition um, and rumor was having it that and this is we're un, unsure of this but rumor had it that the closed session today that the Board of Supervisors had after their uh, State Board of Equalization portion of their meeting was actually on the Trinitas project. So it is a, um, so this morning was Trinitas, Trinitas, uh, Trinitas as far as actual public comment. And more stuff. Now this morning was actually retirement day and this is some very very touching very very touching issues today let me pull up one of the let me pull up one sheet here and bear with me for just a second and let me make sure I get all this stuff read right um, and also a um, couple of the things today now this was a Jim Clary from the Calaveras County Highway Patrol was one of the first men to um, had a very nice retirement ceremony. Um, Supervisor Bill Claudino um, gave his presentation on the retirement of Mr. Clary. Talked some anecdotes about um, his days serving with him because he served with him for I believe 18 years on the force here in Calaveras County. And as most of you know, the uh, retiring Supervisor Claudino is a retired CHP officer. He served here in Calaveras County for numerous years. 
Um, and also, it was um, there were many members from the actual CHP office themselves. Dana Jorgensen from uh, State Senator Dave Cox's office was there to present plaques and awards to Officer Cleary. Um, one of the things that came out about him is he's always, in essence, willing to help. So he was always <coughs> willing to fill in if an officer was sick. Anything he could do to help, and it was um, it was a very very heartfelt, and he he had choked up uh, choked up at the end talking about it as well. Uh, the other retirement today was for Randy Metzger, the county assessor. He is retiring, and um, he is retiring, and it was a very nice um, ceremony honoring him. His wife was there. Um, he was also honored by everyone in the county. Excuse me, um, but also from uh, Dana Jorgensen's office, from the um, from State Senator Cox's office, had a nice um, plaque and decoration for him as well. We will have full video up uh, separately from the Board of Supervisors meeting on our site later, and from all the award ceremonies, and so there was they were available there. Um, also. Uh, in addition to Randy Metzger, the other thing is today was actually retirement day in a, all the way around. Um, Bob Selman, this was um, planning director Bob Selman's last supervisors meeting that he will be speaking at and there um, and supervisor chair Steve Walensky a very nice tribute to Bob, uh, saying he's been and wonderful to serve with. Uh, County Council also mentioned um, how much they appreciated serving with Bob as well. Bob has, uh, Mr. Selman has, has served the county honorably for many, many years. Um, and uh, some were joking through some fairly turbulent times because he has served in the last, uh, in the last couple years, as most of you know, um, there has been a lot of um, upheaval and I guess you would say a little bit of uh, turmoil in the planning and building departments. Um, <clears throat> and also, kind of segueing on that, there was a very touching uh, part of public comment this morning when members of the planning and building departments um, spoke on, this is the department that's going to have eight people laid off from the county. One of the the planners I mean, the building inspectors who was going to be laid off was teared up, and he has, you know, wondering where because um, he has actually applied for different jobs within the county. One of them was even a mechanics job, which he um, did not get because they felt he was not on paper qualified for that position. And this is one of the things that came out of the the meeting and the discussion after that is um, basically Supervisor Tryon, Supervisor Walensky. Um, implored um, County CAO Bob Lawton to make sure that as they do layoffs and as, as in our different departments or different areas in the county have um, are actually some hiring that the county employees who are county employees now would get first crack at those positions. Um, and I think everyone is very cognizant of the economic times in which we are dealing with right now wanted to have a, a small impact on people's personal lives as they can. Um, so it was very touching and you'll see if you want to watch the video we'll have up that is this is a man who was um, speaking about you know his his job and uh, these are never these are never simple issues these are very emotional and uh, and I think it was employed to where um, so, uh, CAO Lawton will also be instructing department heads to make sure that they can look laterally within the county government structure to make sure that they, if there is a person that may or may not be able to fill a position that they have open that they give um, existing county employees or firmer, former county employees that have been recently been laid off um, first crack at getting those positions. Um, and also one of the other big issues today on the agenda was, um, oh, and last on the retirements, um, Supervisor Claudino was presented with a plaque and awards um, in a little brief mention of his retirement because this was his last Board of Supervisors uh, meeting. This is the last super, uh, Supervisors meeting for 2008 and he will be retiring. 
he'll be going off the board and Gary Toffinelli will be filling his seat and he was uh, emotional said that the four years that he served has been a wonderful experience and also a learning experience and also from a, a lot of us in the, count, uh, in the county we'd like to wish uh, Supervisor Claudino well um, he has served his county long and honor honorably first as a uh, CHP officer and then as a county supervisor. We wish him well and thank him for his service to the county and hopefully he has a, a wonderful and uh, nice retirement. Um, and this was also interestingly uh, enough the, the I th believe they'll have poor officially one more meeting but um, as, uh, but it'll be the transitional meeting welcoming on the new members and stuff where they just elect the new chair. But Steve Walensky, this was Supervisor Chair Steve Walensky's um, basically last full meeting as a Board of Supervisors chair. Uh, he talked about what a, um, a wonderful year this has been, a learning experience, and also a, a, f uh, a f you know a full and fulfilling year as Supervisor Chair. Uh, is Supervisor Russ Thomas, who is the vice chair this year, um, in all likelihood will be the uh, supervisor chair for 2009. Uh, the next meeting they will be moving, um, they will, after the first part of the year, that's when they do all the as assignments. They start shuffling, um, shuffling which committee assignments they're on, who's going to be. Um, and so that's one of the things to look forward right after the first of the year is they welcome on, they welcome on Supervisor Toffinelli and have him actually start to um, assimilate into the county government structure. Now the other big item on the, agen on the agenda today that was discussed was legal access. Now the David Wood actually led a lot of the um, <clears throat> a lot of the discussion. He was on the committee um, to there was the legal access committee that has been meeting for the last year or so that is made up of various members in the throughout the um, through from different sectors of the county, some from county government, from private from the private side. And working on legal access, and this has been a real issue for the last couple years, um, as it, because one of the things that came out on um, that started this was the old Arola Road, which was a road off of Parrots Ferry Road that was used to be county, a uh, county maintained a county road, that the county gave up their rights to it. So. And this is when they uh, filled Maloney's several decades ago. And one of the things that came out of that is, is what is legal access? For example, because um, there's different types, and this is an old West County where there's all kinds of different access. Some of the some of the land uh, in Calaveras County was actually government patents from old mining claims, all kinds of stuff. So. They tried to craft language that, while not perfect, would be a tool to, I guess, give a little surer footing going forward on legal access issues. Um, in essence, one of the things that's going to happen is that any um, parcels that were created before 1991 will be exempt. Even if somebody has done a lot line, uh, lot line adjustments before, those will, and whatever, um, those will be exempt from some of the legal access requirements, um, or actually the deeded legal access requirements. They um, also included in the ordinance, uh, the proposed ordinance was width of roadways, different types of things there. And this is not a, this isn't a perfect, um, it's not going to solve all the problems, but you could tell that the uh, committee worked very long and hard on this. This was a 3-2 vote, again, for the uh, Board of Supervisors. Voting in favor of it was Supervisor Walensky, Supervisor Claudino, and Supervisor Thomas. Uh, voting against were Supervisors Callaway and also Tryon. They were very, I guess, adamant a little bit about it that their that a property owner would have deeded legal access or certified legal access, period, regardless. Because, um, and you can see their point, Clean, cleanly from a legal perspective, um, that would be the cleanest possible way to do it. But I think that there was some sentiment to where they're trying to balance that with um, 
trying to not impede on people's perceived rights. One of the things was as part of this ordinance to where if there is already an existing structure on a property or existing improvements, that if that house was burned down, for example, that you would be allowed to rebuild, you'd be allowed to say, make improvements, modifications, add a garage, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> so the legal access issues took up a took up a great deal of time. Uh, took up a great deal of time in the meeting, but it was very productive. Um, and also, I think um, it was a, um, a needed thing, and also I think it will start putting together some of putting to rest some of the um, some of the legal access issues. Also, in the language was is who would be responsible for deciding when uh, the legal access requirements would be met. Um, the how it came out was if it was something that where the it involved a road, it would be county um, for PB Public Works. If it was a driveway, then it would fall under building and planning. Um, also today. There was, a, we stopped by the COG for, they had the hobnob at the COG, uh, COG for their holiday bash for thinking everybody for a great year. And also one of the, um, and a cautionary tale from the COG was that um, Executive Director Tim McSorley, and he mentioned this earlier at the Board of Supervisors meeting as well, they're going to have to watch some of the state budgets going forward because if the state is close to running out of cash actually, there is some expectation that they may start slowing or slowing some of the building and construction projects just because literally the state would not have the funds in the in the uh, in the kitty so to speak to keep funding the construction until they have other uh, financing arrangements made so that's one thing to watch going forward um, there as well and also um, before we get back to some of the stuff on um, some of the other issues we did want to say that there was a tragic story um, from last night, there was a home on the 3500 block of Murphy's Grade Road that was a complete loss. The uh, fire started um, around 5, um, you know, 5:30 or so for a family there, uh, and this is Ayala family. And this is, um, and we posted something. We found it from. Um, and we'll post the put the fire report and stuff up tomorrow. But one of the things is is a family's needs. Now this was a. Um, and this home, I guess it was the home to eight people. And there also the Foothill Church. The Foothill Church is actually doing a um, some for people some fundraisers and stuff for the for the family. But also the Bret Hart High School. And the Bret Hart High School will actually be using the staff lounge for um, if people have things that they can donate. And we'll read a little more on this. And this was um, and we'll just read. This was a. Um, this was sent to us, and this is written by Kelly Osborne um, um, on staff from Bret Hart High School. And this is um, talking about the uh, the ninth grader that was that lived in the home. Roy Arrow is a ninth grade student at Bret Hart High School. Last night, Roy and his family were dealt an extremely bad hand. Their home burned to the ground. They lost everything. All assets and possessions were lost in the fire. The fire evidently began from electrical wiring and possibly a wild animal. Their home burned completely to the ground, and this is where we really need to rally together. Um, we will use the staff room. They're going to use the staff room, uh, staff room of Bret Hart as a collection area to gain items back for them. We'll also keep a running tally of items that we receive from all of you, so we'll try not to double up on on those items. Bring money if you can afford it. Like I stated before, they lost everything. As for the other students that we have been collecting for, we'll see, um, we'll see what we can swing. My hope is that we'll still may be able to help um, the families on my list. We'll have to see. Living in the home where um, the mother um, it was an XL size, a shoe size is 8, a brother with a shirt of large, pants 32-30, shoe 10.5, they lost all their clothing and everything. And this is just a few days before Christmas. A sister, uh, extra large shirts, pants, shoes, 5.5. Roy, shirts, XL pants, um, pants 3630s, shoes 10.5. Niece, seven years old, with a shoe of 4.5, uh, four and a half size. Nephew, four months old, was in the house there. Grandma, large clothes, a 6.5 shoe size. Brother-in-law, shirt, large pants, 34, 32, and a 10 and a half um, foot, 10 and a half shoe size as well. 
Um, and this is where Calaveras County has always been a very generous and great county. When families and people like this um, are in need, people the county always seems to rally together and members of the community. Uh, and remember these people in your in your thoughts uh, because they had you know close to Christmas and they had had their home uh, burn. Uh, Kim will be back with us tomorrow night, and she will be back here and want to. Um, she's got a little bit like we said before, a little bit of a of a nasal issue, a little bit of a, um, a sinus infection that uh, hopefully she'll get uh, tackled by tomorrow night. And we'll see you back here. And thank you very much and have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. Good night.